Hey there, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of Afterthoughts. Tim Risto here, host of the Creative Christians podcast. It is so good to see you. I was on the road to Houston the last couple of days, got back late last night, uh, working on some video projects for some of my clients. And the whole issue of tools that we use in our creative fields came to light for me. Before I left, one of my clients had requested the use of a certain tool that i didn't have in my toolbox simply because it's not something I use or have, have had need of in, in recent years. What tool is that? What am I talking about? Well, as most of you know, I work in video production. And the tool they requested was this right here. I'm sure most people are pretty familiar with what this is. This is a teleprompter. You obviously put it in front of your camera. It projects the script that you have up onto a piece of glass that your camera shoots through, and then your talent here out front can read the script without it showing up on the camera recording itself. Useful tools so that your talent can maintain eye contact with the camera and the audience, but they can read their script fluidly and uh, look like they know what they're talking about. So it's a useful tool. I didn't have one, like I said, because I the type of video work I do is a lot more documentary style stuff. I just didn't have a huge need for a teleprompter. I've had the occasional requests and we've always found a way around it by either putting, you know, tape, pitting, taping the script underneath the lens and they just kind of check their notes that way or they memorize the script and we go from there. It's come up a little more often lately and I'd been thinking about it for a while, but when this particular client, a uh, large church in the Houston area. One of their pastors requested it for some Advent devotional videos that we were taping. I thought, you know, it's a good opportunity. I need to pick that tool up. That's a tool I don't have in my toolbox. This client is requesting it's something I could really use, would be helpful for them. I was able to place an order through the wonderful Amazon.com, get it overnight, and it was sitting on my doorstep by 6.30 a.m. the next morning. Went to Houston, I had another shoot first, but then uh, yesterday, the second shoot was with this church. We made use of the teleprompter with, let's see, one, two, three, three different pastors and uh, a DCE. And you know what? It worked phenomenally well. The, uh, the pastors and the DCE were all able to concentrate on their delivery and their energy level and things like that. They didn't have to worry about what do I say? Am I saying this in the right order? Am I getting everything out? You know, they didn't have to worry about memorizing their scripts or things like that. So it was very effective for them. They were all complimenting how much easier it made it for them and uh, how much more comfortable they were doing the scripts that they had written. It was a tool that made a big difference for them. We were able to get through the recordings so much more quickly and efficiently, and it was just a more fluid process. That one tool made a big, big difference for them and for this project, and it'll make a big difference for me in editing too because I've got much more complete takes. Don't have to worry about trying to edit around when they can't remember something. They have to stop and start or pick, do pickup lines or things like that. So it was a tool that made a difference for all of us. Now, this tool is not the latest and the greatest. Teleprompters have been around for a while. They used to be huge, massive things that uh, took a lot more weight and work and, and time to set up. Now, this particular one comes in a kit, a box this size, very thin. Open it up. Well, I want to open it up. I don't want the glass to come out of there. But anyway, it's very compact, very portable, and uh, doesn't require a lot of work to set up. It helped me to clients need, and it will help me being a tool in my toolbox that I can use in the future. Now, that was an example of a tool that, you know, I didn't have that I could pick up, but it didn't require a ton of time or effort or money to do. It was just another tool to add to the toolbox. But sometimes you know, we don't have the opportunity to always just pick up new tools. Uh, or if we do, we have to look for economical ways to get them, like I did here. I had limited options. I had to find something that could be shipped overnight and get to me the next day. Uh, and also, you know, budget's limited. I didn't want to spend a ton of money on it. And so this fit the need. 
But sometimes, you know, we just have to work also with the tools we have. So when you think about the different tools you have in whatever creative field you work or play in, it's easy sometimes to get caught up in thinking, oh, I don't have all the tools that somebody else has. I don't have the resources that somebody else has. I don't have the talents or things that somebody else has. You know, social media these days, of course, it's all built around people showing what they have, right? If they're going to post about themselves, it's usually to show off something that they're doing or something that they have. And those of us on the receiving end of that or the viewing end of that, however you want to say it, can easily get caught up in, gee, I don't have that. I don't do that. That's not me. I don't have those abilities. And to feel less than. I want to encourage you something. And in particular, I'm talking about creative tools today. But, you know, it applies to all these other areas as well. Use the tools that you have. The ones that God has blessed you with. And trust that he will continue to bless you with those tools even if you feel like you have less than others. Just know that God has blessed you with those for a reason, because he entrusts and knows that's what you need. So I want to bring up a devotion I read this morning from this devotional booklet here, 365 Encouraging Verses of the Bible for Men. This is one I picked up several years ago, and uh, and I really like it. I use it every once in a while, trade off with uh, with my Daily Word for Men devotional that I've been using. Here on day 270, the Bible verse here from 1 Samuel 13, 19 to 22, reads like this, A blacksmith could not be found in all the land of Israel. For the Philistines had said, This will prevent the Hebrews from making swords and spears. So all Israel had to go down to the Philistines in order to get their plowshares, cutting instruments, axes, and sickles sharpened. They charged two-thirds of a shekel to sharpen plowshares and cutting instruments, and a third of a shekel to sharpen picks and axes, and to set ox goads. So on the day of the battle, no sword or spear was to be found in the hand of anyone in the army that was with Saul and Jonathan. No one but Saul and his son Jonathan had them. Here's the devotion. This is a fascinating view of Palestine at the very cusp of the Iron Age. The Philistines, more technologically advanced than the Israelites, guarded all knowledge of iron making as a vital military secret. Bronze, the metal available to the Israelites, is actually harder than wrought iron, but it cannot be resharpened by a grindstone. It must be completely reforged. By controlling the blacksmiths, the Philistines implemented an effective arms embargo against the Israelites. God used even older technology to end it, however. Five smooth stones and a sling. Which, of course, references 1 Samuel 17, 40-50, which, as most of you probably are familiar with, is a story of David and Goliath, where he def- David defeats Goliath with a slingshot and those stones. God makes use of of the tools that he grants us however he sees fit. And you don't have to have the latest and the greatest, the best, the most expensive tools. You just need to have the right tools for the job. God will bless them if it's according to his will. So I love this. You know, the Philistines, as it says here, were more technologically advanced than the Israelites. So they had the technology. They had the smarts, too, because it says here, you know, by controlling the blacksmiths, the Philistines implemented an effective arms embargo against the Israelites. So they had the technology. They had the smarts to figure out, to strategize this the right way. And they were charging them money to come and sharpen things by controlling the blacksmiths. So the Israelites had to come to them to get stuff sharpened. So they, they were getting money. So they also had the money. So they had all these things. And yet, God took David 
with a slingshot and five smooth stones. The lowest technology compared to everything the, Israel, the uh, Philistines had. And he had them defeat the Philistine giant Goliath. I mean, talk about the amazing ability of God to work through weakness, what we perceive as weakness, turn it into a strength. So look at the tools you have. Trust that God will use what you've got. If you're just feeling, uh, you know, like you don't have the best and you can't afford the best, work with whatever God has blessed you with. Look at any tools you have as a blessing. The fact that if God has blessed you with little, um, I think there's an aspect there of recognizing God has blessed you with that because he knows that's what you need. That's all you need to work with. And maybe those who are blessed with a lot more don't know how to work with little uh, or are not blessed with that ability to work with little, where God knows you're able to use a little and do much with it. So think of that in terms of your, your talents, your tools, your resources, even your finances. God's blessed you with those things because he knows he can make those things work wonders with what you've been given and with how he works through you. Take that perspective and take that to heart when you think about what you have. Instead of comparing to others and what they don't, you know, what they have and you don't have, just remember you've been blessed by God for a special purpose. And the tools you have and the time you've been given and the resources you have and the money you have is what God has given you to work with. And he knows he can make wonders happen through that. Take that. When we look at facing the iron giants, so to speak, when we look in this story here, the giant uh, Goliath, they had this cap, you know, capitalized the iron, iron industry of the time, you could say. When we face our own iron giants, not everybody has to be an iron man. Just be who God made you to be. That's what's most important. No matter the money you have, no matter the tools you have, no matter the resources you've been giving, God will work wonders through that. Those are my thoughts for today as we look at tools of the trade of your creative work. Blessings, y'all. Have a great day. 